People, I am going to be leaving 2022 behind me, but bringing some of my favorite DIY ideas and hacks with me into 2023. Counting down 20 to my best Dollar Tree DIYs and hacks from this year, starting with a hack that I turned into a short, creating a sconce out of a piece of Dollar Tree decor. Next time you're in Dollar Tree, grab one of these little decorative pieces and while you're at it, some of this decorative vinyl. Bring them on home and you're going to want to attach your vinyl over the section with the words. And be sure to paint over your words so they don't show through your vinyl. Take your hanger and place on the back. These hammer in ones are my favorites. Take some embellishments to add to all four corners. If you don't have these, thumbtacks will work just fine and paint them. Take any knob you have laying around. This one I got on clearance at Hobby Lobby and attach it to your piece. For this piece, we are creating a little photo stand. This is going to be super easy and super simple. I know people who is this creator you're watching today. I'm killing it with these easy projects. <laughs> don't get used to it. I love y'all, but don't get used to it. You know, it's not in me to constantly have these easy projects for you. Now, all we're doing is just connecting the two of these palettes. And we're doing that from the front of the palette, what I usually use. So we can use the flip side, the back of the palette to create our space to put our little picture. Now, I needed to create a stand. So I'm using tumbling blocks to accomplish that. And I know what you're thinking, it's gonna tumble over, but let me show you a little trick. So if you put two tumbling blocks at the bottom, almost at the exact edge, you see how it stands kind of perfect? You take a third one and you're going to make sure that it is slightly, maybe like a tiny two centimeters above the ones you put in front. See that gap? This is going to allow your stand the ability to lean. Mind blowing, right? Super simple too. You don't have to drill no holes attached, nothing like bam, lean in little stand, that simple. And it's been my experience because I think I've painted hundreds of palettes. The easiest way to paint them is spray paint, but the second easiest is to take paint in water and have it very liquidy like this so you can just get the paint just it spreads everywhere super easy if you want to dunk them i also dunk them sometimes if i'm doing a giant video of these just to get the paint on there super quick and super efficiently i'm gonna take this napkin that was given to me by spoiler girl thank you again my friends and we are going to cut this down so a lot of people use paper as backgrounds why not napkins right you guys know i love napkins so giving you another use for them than just decoupage i'm cutting this up and then i'm tearing it in purposeful places i'm not going to tear the whole thing i just want it to look a little bit dated nothing you know nothing crazy and if you want to skip this part go ahead but for me it's just going to add a little bit something because we're keeping the palette neutral and we are also not going to glue this down to the palette this is so we can be versatile and if we want to put a christmasy background if we want to change the seasons whatever you change your decor you never have to get rid of this little photo holder but to add some vintage touches we're just going to take a little bit of the antique waverly wax rub it on our fingers and then gently press around the edges this is now if you want to burn your napkin because i've done that i do that too on my furniture you can go right ahead and do that to get them crispy old edges but this is just a simple chemical free way to be able to add that vintage look on there and we're going to finish this up by putting a little tiny clip on there use whatever clip you want this is something that was free and i had available and i'm just gonna tape the little napkin down and when i want to switch it out i'm going to just take the napkin off with a little tape and switch it out now please mind the picture people it was the smallest one i had to fit in here this was a gift from a friend when i got engaged For this Dollar Tree hack, we're gonna use these three glass pieces, and then we're gonna also use some of these little accents. I have seen some pictures where people were taking glass pieces and attaching them to make them look like one centerpiece. So I thought, 
I'm going to give this a try and put my own spin on it. <laughs> so you could really use any glass pieces and as many as you want with whatever style. This is just how I'm rolling with it. And please make sure that you're using your E6000 or Gorilla Glue gel to attach, not just hot glue. Because if you're using just hot glue, it's going to pop right off. You want to make sure you're using a glue that is specifically designed for plastic and glass and things like that. But just spread your gems and your little accents how Ever you want this is my final result spray paint it whatever color you want I chose to go with a matte black and I added a little bit of Dixie Belle's gold gilding wax a silver gilding wax one went really nice too or maybe even add a couple of transfers to the sides but however you decide to decorate yours I just love how this turned out For our next project, we're gonna need some of Dollar Tree's canvases or whatever kind of canvases you want. This is not so much a DIY decor hack as it is an interchangeable hack. I have been really interested on trying to save money and to change out my decor as much as possible without breaking the bank. And I thought maybe you guys are too. So I'm starting this project off by cutting off the canvas on these. And someone dropped the ball. Why do people make this look so easy? It was not, like it was attached on the sides. I had to bust out the scissors. It was a mess. And then look at that. All these crusty bits. I had to sand it down. And then look at this. It's so rickety. I could have assembled four square dowels together better than this thing was attached. Moving on, moving on. You're also gonna need some of these Dollar Tree wall clings. The idea behind this is to be able to stain the frame whatever color you want and keep your clean canvas and you can paint that or whatever, whatever color you want and just change out the actual design in the center so you can keep these up on your wall all year long and just update the looks. Since we're de-sticking these wall clings, it is easy to just remove them right off your canvas when you're done with that style. Just de-sticky your next set and then apply right back in the canvas. these one by threes and I did take a second to show you the measurements real quick in case you want to recreate this for yourself you could use a miter box to do this no heavy tools are required you will need three pallets as well and then attach the pallets with wood glue and hot glue to accomplish those bonds for your little piece of wood that you're going to put on the sides here now if you don't want to use this and you just want to hot glue it more power to you but I will take no responsibility if it falls apart on you okay because you were warned see how the bottom of the wood block comes down to the bottom there's a little bit of space at the top if you want to cut your block the opposite way like make it a little bit longer and then just kind of flip it that would work too i like the look of the wood this way so that's why i did it this way and that tiny little gap at the top there like no one's gonna care this thing is so cute and you could just really put it anywhere and just absolutely loved how this turned out i did make sure to put all the glue on first before attaching the last piece on both sides and you're gonna want to hold it for a second to let that hot glue set in because once you go to attach this to the bottom piece, which is that palette we have over here, you're gonna use mostly wood glue. So that way you know that if you drop this thing or whatever, it's gonna hold. So making sure the top piece is well held together before you put this on here, because you're only putting little bits of wood or hot glue <laughs> in the corners just to, you know, grab it initially. And here's me showing you like how I missed with the wood glue. Wasn't a big deal. I just took a paintbrush and kind of smooshed the wood glue in up against the pallets. And then I let this dry overnight. For this part, you're gonna need some joint compound and whatever color paint you want. I'm using black and we're gonna just mix the two together and that's it. We're just gonna create a colored raised stencil on this natural wood. And I wanted to do this because believe it or not, when I have done raised stencils in the past and then I paint over them, I have people, even my best friend is one of them, who are like, I really like the stencil before you paint it over it. So for all of you who have commented <laughs> and Randy, if you're watching, and this DIY is for you. And the best part about this is you can create 
the raised stencil in any color you want. I just used black. I wanted to keep this really neutral. I was going to go gray, but I'm like, nah, let's live a little. <laughs> and it's so amazing. This might actually be one of my favorite raised stencil looks. Let me know what you think. slices and a base you can pick whatever kinds you want this is what I'm using for this and a Dollar Tree stencil it's Dollar Tree right I'm trying to use as many Dollar Tree supplies as I can so I'm taking this stencil and I'm using the large greenery piece on the larger slice and I'm lightly stippling it because I really don't want it to be completely solid I want it to look a little worn and I'm only doing part of the small greenery piece on the next stencil because it's a smaller slice of wood now for this piece, I have a little palette that is left over from an old project that had holes drilled in it. And I am just placing the pieces in the wood where I think they're going to go. I'm not going to actually place them right away. So this way, as I'm placing my accent pieces, I already have exactly marked where I want the wood slices to go. And I can press as hard as I need to while I'm applying the little accent pieces onto our slices of wood without having to worry about anything falling apart. For our little bow, we're going to just cut up this little bow I picked up from Dollar Tree and add a little button right in the center of it using tacky glue for all of this. This is an amazing adhesive whenever you're taking fabric and applying it to any surface really. Now I'm just using the end of the paintbrush to kind of spread around our tacky glue on the tops of our little wood pieces. And then I'm taking our little slivers of our bow and just kind of putting it out. Kind of like a messy bow, only a little bit more organized. And we're just really using one fabric. And people use as much fabric as you want or as many different styles. I just want it to keep it simple with this one style. And then I'm using more tacky glue to attach our button on top of the fabric. In case you're wondering why I'm not squeezing the tacky glue out of the bottle, it's because that lid always gets gunked up for me. And I know there's a million different ways, but for me, I just unscrew it and shove the back of a paint stick down there and it works just fine. Stop judging me. Now we're going to attach our little wood pieces to each other and our base and finally apply our little stem. These are little leg nub things that I purchased from Walmart. They're not from Dollar Tree, okay? Listen, I'm doing my best to keep it all Dollar Tree themed. Sometimes I gotta go outside the box, okay? And to hide our base, I decided to add a little bit of that messy moss I love dealing with. I did that off camera, I saved you. You're welcome. But I truly love how adorable and high-end this little decor piece turned out. I'm using a piece of foam board to create this piece. You can use a piece of wood, a frame, anything. This is just me giving you the idea. We're taking a piece of vinyl and we're gonna cover it over 75% of the half of this piece of foam board. If you choose to do foam board, be prepared because this is not forgiving. If you try to peel this up, it's just gonna peel your foam board up. So you get one shot at this, okay? One shot. I was fairly happy with how well I did. Next, I'm taking some joint compound. Now this is some stuff that I have around the house that I use to fix walls and stuff. I do not, I've used this stuff from Dollar Tree and for something like this, I would not use this particular brand because it is more like a powdery, I don't know, it reminds me of like sand almost. See how it's kind of stuck in my finger? The other stuff that I'm using is creamy and it just, it doesn't also crack as much as that other stuff. The other stuff I feel like cracks more than this particular joint compound. And I mean, spackling and joint compound are fairly different, but not hugely different. That's topic for a whole nother video, which I think I might have even did somewhere <laughs> in my content. Okay, back to the project. So we're just spreading this on here and you could leave it like that if you want. I decided that I wanted to take a little clay tool and they actually have different tools with different shapes and stuff on the edges. So really whatever makes you fuzzy inside to create this look, you 
make that happen. I just chose to draw some waves really with the little clay scraping tool and let it dry. And I just love this. I mean, seriously, the vinyl looks amazing with this texture on the side. And you'll need four of these large palettes and we're gonna need to glue them at their little nubs on the ends. So this way that as we are stapling them together, we got that extra wood glue in there to make sure that we have a tight, secure bond. And I'm gonna put a couple little bits of popsicle sticks in here just so that way we make sure those staples don't stick out. So once you have them all together, it is time to bring in the staple gun. And it's always important people to make sure that you're using the proper way so we don't staple our table or anything that's not supposed to be stapled. Keep in mind that this is really thin. So when you're putting your staples in there, you either wanna put it on the thick pieces or where the popsicle sticks are. I am showing you here that I did do it on the ends just to prove that it does pop through one to the other side. So just be careful and add that extra layer or use the thicker ends of these palettes to make sure you're getting that bond there with your staple gun. Next, we're going to bring in our napkin for our decoupage. This napkin is not in any of my bundle kits on my website. It will be soon. I do have other kits available on there currently. This one will be coming in one of the kits. So don't worry for those of you that like this napkin. I always try to sell what you see me use in the videos unless someone has given me something. When it comes to the napkins, people, when it comes to the napkins. <laughs> so the easiest way I have found is to take Mod Podge, rub between my fingers, and then to peel off your sneaky layers. Napkins usually have two if you're lucky. It's just got the one, but mostly it has two. I constantly have people in the comments bring up this little trick and hack. I actually have a decoupage, a how to decoupage video people where I go over different methods of how to use things. I appreciate and love all the love in the comments that I get so, so much. So thank you all for always having my back. Now to attach a napkin, I'm just using some Mod Podge and we are going across the whole entire little piece of this palette. And then we're just gonna fold it over and press it down with our little sponge. If I'm being completely honest, the best way to really do this is going to be the iron-on method. And honestly, it is quicker for me to use my sponge method, press it down, let it dry, than to do the iron-on method. For me, that usually takes about an hour to hour and a half because I really like to let things dry with each process. But if you want to cut out all the wrinkles and all the little lumpy bumpies that this will bring at your project, then the iron-on method with these palettes is hands down the best when you're decoupage. But if you're piecing stuff like this, do not do the iron oil method because if you do not have that Mod Podge on there just exactly right, then it is going to stick to your wax paper that you have going on there. And we don't want that happening. Next, you're going to take a piece of sandpaper once this is completely dry and we're going to go in between and around all the edges to get that extra napkin off. And before I have 500 comments talking about the burn method, I know about the burn method. I prefer this method. Thank you for having my back with the tips and tricks. I appreciate you. Next, I'm taking some dowels and I'm just taking a little bit of Waverly's antique wax and just staining them. You do not have to do this part or you could put these, you know, put whatever color you want on these. And then I'm just chopping them down. I could not find my gator miter shear things. They are the easiest thing to use for dowels. I am really gonna organize my house at some point <laughs> so all my tools accessible. But once I cut these down, there was no, you could organize them to make them look however you want. I just kind of wanted them tossed on here randomly no real order to anything and you can use more or less dowels if you want as well it's really just a preference and i'm giving you guys the idea you know what i'm saying you guys you guys are picking up what i'm putting down right and then add whatever embellishments you want to the center i'm just using some wood flowers here and that's going to be it for this one
I'm perpetrating like I'm gonna use four, but three of the smaller palettes for this. And I wanna just take a second to show you things that you can use to hang up these. I use these little hammer in hangers. These are one of my favorites and they are down in my Amazon store. They're simple to put in there. They don't require you having to screw anything in. But I wanted to show you because a lot of times when I stage pieces, I use little stick ones or Velcro pieces and get this little tag over there, it was distracting me. And I use these Velcro pieces or I use little sticker pieces to help me with staging. But if you're creating decor for your home, the hammer and hooks are easy way to be able to hang them on the wall. The idea for this decor piece is super simple. I'm leaving the palettes very neutral. And these I picked up from Dollar Tree, these succulents. And you just pull the back out and then we're gonna use one of these little sticky pieces. So I'm gonna show you how to fake it when you're just staging something. So I was low on these smaller palettes. So I'm like, I have two ideas. I need the palettes and let me show my subscribers how if they want to interchange their stuff and not use glue, how simple this is. So while I'm perpetrating, like I have four DIYs, I actually do, but I'm, going to be able to recycle my products to make the fourth DIY using these same exact palettes because all I'm doing is sticking these stickers on here and then look how I can rearrange them and use different florals to decorate my house if I want to. Plus the neutral color of these palettes is so in right now, you can really take bright colors or dark colors and you can use succulents or regular florals to create this look and use as many of these palettes as you want. Now I don't do paper crafts, <laughs> so don't get too excited about this. This will not be reappearing. Such a pain in my bootay. But you'll need some rip pages or some regular paper. This is book paper and a piece of cardboard. Just cut it in a little circle. And then we're just gonna fold it to make it look like this. It looks like a cone, right? Like an ice cream cone. I'm gonna put little baby scoops of ice cream in there. I'm gonna glue it, let them dry. Make a bunch of these different sizes. You don't have to be particular about it. And then start gluing them in a circle. I personally did like a outside layer. I left some spaces and then went in with like different size pieces in between the gaps. Once I had that all glued down, I then took these little glass ball accents and glued six of them to create the center of our little faux galvanized flower. We are making a fake galvanized flower out of this and how it's going to get that galvanized look is we're going to spray paint it. Now I'm spray painting mine gold. You can spray paint yours the metal color to give it that galvanized look. But the reason I'm spray painting it gold is because it's going to match our backdrop. For our giant backdrop for this beautiful wall decor piece, I used a large foam board and a piece of Dollar Tree's new wallpaper. And just put our fake metal flower right in the center. For our tumbling block wall pockets, we're going to use my favorite bonds for this, which is type on wood glue and hot glue. And I'm going to make sure that I am not overlapping the two so they don't cancel each other out and we have a secure hole. And to start this out, we're going to need to use two, three, four, one, five, and then repeat the process. So we'll need two twos, two threes, two fours, and one five to create our wall pocket. You can also create whatever type of hanger you want on this. I just ended up nailing in a little hammer tooth hanger on the back. If you want to create a string, that is fine as well. Or even if you wanted to put a stand on the back of that, this would work for this project also. But here's me kind of laying it out so you can see two, three, four, the one, five, and then it's going to go four, three, two, one, all over again. You can pick up these little sticks at Hobby Lobby, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, anywhere. These little square dowels, cut it down to size so it is the length of your wall pocket. And then we're going to just glue this down here 
so this way all our pieces stay together in a row. If you wanna use more tumbling blocks instead of using a wood stick like this, go right ahead. I just had this available and I felt that this would just kinda of be a little bit easier than me possibly having to worry about the pieces falling apart off the back at some point even though I feel like my bonds are fairly good. <laughs> sometimes you gotta worry, okay, sometimes. But I just put them together. You can measure the spaces that you're leaving, but I just eyeballed it. I wung it, people, I wung it, and it turned out just fine. I let this dry for 24 hours before I decided to paint it. And again, do this whatever colors you want. I'm just using like a grayish brown and I'm not even going heavy with it. And then we're going to bring in our crusty bit paintbrush to add a little bit of distressing. I just take an old beat up paintbrush that is nice and crusty and we put a little bit of paint on it and just drag it across and it is a super easy way to get you a distressed look without any of the effort next i'm taking some burlap fabric i had a laying around and i'm going to cut it to size of the two the width of the two tumbling blocks and then i'm just going to use some tacky glue yeah, that's right, I'm using some tacky glue to attach it. Use whatever glue you preferably want. I personally, when I'm doing something like this, and I do resell a lot of pieces, when I'm using fabric on a wood, tacky glue seems to hold up amazingly well versus just using like a hot glue or something to hold it down, like it eventually pops off. But the tacky glue seems to really stay, especially if you add some staples later. You'll also want to be mindful because doing something like this, the glue also seeps through your fabric and it doesn't seem to matter what fabric, it just seeps through. And then I'm taking these little, you could use little pins, thumbtacks if you have them. I have these little bit pieces. I never remember the names of these things. And I'm just cutting the back off and then I'm going to add them down in our little corners of our pocket for a little extra something, something. And I felt like this just wasn't enough. It was a little too plain for me. I needed to just kick it up a notch. So I thought, let's make us a messy bleh <laughs> and put it in the corner here. So I just took a bunch of like strings and ribbons and put them together on top of each other. Found this flower that actually just happens to match and that's gonna be it for this one. I really love this table centerpiece hack and I know it's for fall, but you could take this concept and use it with anything that Dollar Tree sells all year long. For our table centerpiece, we're gonna need two of these thin pumpkins and a palette. This is gonna serve as our base and centerpiece to hold our two pumpkin together because these are thin as I don't know what people, I don't know where my extra 25 cents going, but it certainly is not going towards making sure my pumpkin wood pieces are thick because they're not, they're so thin. Now, thin, but not thin enough to make this easy for me to slice the bottom of this pumpkin off. This is dangerous, so dangerous. Let me just express to y'all how scared I was for my life while I was trying to cut the bottom of this off. Now, if you have an easier way to go about doing that, let your girl know, help me out. <laughs> because I struggled and I don't wanna have to relive that nightmare ever again. I got it cut down thin enough that I could just snap it back and pop the piece off. And then I took sandpaper, kind of smooth it down. And then you guys are like, Brandy, what are you doing? I wanted the pumpkin to be a little bit shorter in the front so we could see the front and the back as our centerpiece. So I just cut about two inches off the bottom of the front section. And then I glued them together and I'm coming back in with a stapler, <laughs> of course. Be mindful as you're doing this because it is super easy to miss. 
and I also wasn't applying enough pressure. So I had to come back in with the hammer and hammer that sucker in just a little bit. Add some wood glue in there. Also, if you plan on putting heavy things in this, I just use hot glue to immediately attach it because I knew I was using a staple gun. So I felt pretty confident with the hot glue and using the staples. I also did this to the front and the back. I wanted to hide the bottom. So I took some of this metal ribbon you can pick up from Dollar Tree. If your Dollar Tree don't have and you have a Hobby Lobby near you, Hobby Lobby carries it too. And then I applied this gather together sign that was on another piece of Dollar Tree fall decor and it was just kind of scrap laying around, you know, and I thought it would just look really nice on here. This is a nightmare. Using twine to wrap around this stem. It's not easy. It's weird and the <laughs> just goes all different ways. Just apply it however you can people, okay? But it looks nice on your stem pieces. Once I had everything put together, I then came back in with two more palettes and attached them on the sides for a finish. Now, I gotta tell you, you would not know I did not purchase this thing from a store. It's absolutely gorgeous. Fill it with whatever you want. I put some florals and a candle in there. This hurricane vase is not as large as the other ones that I've picked up from Dollar Tree, but it will do just the trick for this simple project. I just took the vinyl and cut it to size for the bottom portion. I had some of this messy, sparkly, <laughs> messy, glittery ribbon and thought, let's attach this one here, make a little glam part. You can use, of course, whatever ribbon you want. And I did hot glue it to the material. I don't like using the hot glue right on the glass. It never holds well for me. Some of these little wood bits I picked up from Dollar Tree, added in a little white stand and put a candle pillar on the top. And I just love how elegant and simple this piece was. Project. We're going to need one of these palettes and a piece of this decorative pine molding from Home Depot. You can pick these pieces up in little four foot sizes, but this one I had eight foot and I cut it down the size. And then we're going to bring in the miter shears. I may complain about these joints a lot, but one thing these are great at is cutting molding at a 45 degree angle and making your DIYs so much easier than having to go use a miter box or you know a saw look how beautiful that is and it took me like two seconds whenever you're creating a frame and this is really for anything best way for me to explain this is to measure your corner at the tip of the end and then cut your way in <laughs> that's the best way that i can explain that so this way the ends meet right up in the tip of the corner. See how that's going on in there. And you can really apply the same process for door frames, windows, all the things. You measure the tip of the corner to the end and then work your way in. I also liked it. That's right, your girl does home projects. I know it's been a long time <laughs> since I made one of those videos, but I'm handy. Okay, anyhow, back to this. Before I glue or nail this down, and really I do this with anything I'm framing, I like to kind of push the pieces together and make sure it all makes sense and trim off if I need to. I always like to overcut because you can trim it down. You can never really bring it back if you cut it off. We're going to use these four paint colors throughout our entire video to create our weathered look. I'm only going to show you how to do it one time on this video so I don't waste your viewing time painting constantly with everything. I have done this many times but I use different colors depending on what look you're going for. For this you want to make sure you're purposefully placing your different colored paints in different sections on your palette or your piece of wood whatever you're painting. So this way you're not blending them. You don't want one color to look like it's moving into the next. You want them to have their own dominant sections and this way they're kind of harsh and abrupt the way that they end. I guess that's the best way I can explain that. Next, you're gonna bring in the crusty bit paintbrush. Uh, or distress, however you want. <laughs> I'm gonna use this to distress my white paint. Now I'm just taking a little bit of the Waverly's white and I am dry 
crusty bit brush and <laughs> the paint all along the palette. I did paint these off camera. I just painted our trim white and we're going to then place them on our palette. I'm leaving a few spots open so this way I can come in and hit this up with some hot glue so we can get an immediate bond on here so I can continue carrying on with my craft. But the wood glue is gonna ensure that these do not pop off later. And make sure when you're applying them that they're not overlapping so they don't cancel each other out. If you wanna leave your frame and your piece alone at this point, Point, go right ahead but I gotta be extra sometimes and bring in the Dixie Bells gilding wax in silver and I'm just gonna rub that over the edge it's gonna help these little engravings kind of pop out more with the project and then I glued some wood flowers in the center and that's it for this one For our next project, we're gonna need four of the larger palettes and I'm going to just paint them with some Waverly White and a little bit of water. I like to mix them together. It's a quick and easy way to get the palettes all covered. I've done that in past videos, but I wanna save you your viewing time here. Make sure you let your palettes dry really well, especially if you're gonna glue them together. If not, you know, glue is not gonna work well on a damp surface, okay? You don't need me to explain that to you, but if you do, let me know in the comments I'll have a conversation with you for the sake of how tiny the space was that I was using to glue these together I just used hot glue but I did go over these and paint some wood glue over top of it for a longer hold I always 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 tell people do not just use hot glue on your products if someone is telling you just use the hot glue, that's fine for crafter's sake if you're just like keeping something and you don't care if it falls apart, but hot glue will wear, especially if you leave it in the sun, it will melt. Try and put some E6000 wood glue or some of my favorite Gorilla Glue gel on your products for that long lasting bond. So this way, if the hot glue on your project is having a bad day, you know, the Gorilla Glue gel has its back and it's gonna hold your stuff together. Once you have all your little sides together you could leave it like this but I'm gonna take this stick I do not remember if I picked this up from Hobby Lobby or if I got it from Home Depot but they both sell these little square dowels well it's not little it's kind of thick actually and all I'm doing for this part which is a little tedious is measuring it to size so this way I can wrap it around the center to give us a little bit of contrast add a little bit more of a high-end looking thing I was trying to take these crafts up a notch to more of looking like a home decor piece you'd pick up somewhere in a store and pay a little bit more money for. I do want to, <laughs> me and these miter shears. So they did the job, but um, yeah. If you got a miter box, it might be a little bit easier <laughs> than these with how thick this particular one was. And again, you can do this as thin or as thick as you want, but see me over here using the hot glue just for that quick bond in that one spot. The rest is all wood glue, so I know that these wood pieces are not gonna come peeling off of here anytime soon. If you wanna bust out a level to make sure that these are exactly in the precise spot as you go around, go right ahead. You know I like to wing things, so that's pretty much what I did here and I adjusted with each turn. The piece is really universal and you can honestly use it anywhere in your home to give it a little oomph. Even though this piece has a little pumpkin in it, Dollar Tree sells plain wood plaque pieces all year long. And this idea you could switch up with your decor with just the plain ones as you want. We're gonna keep this simple, I'm keeping it neutral. And I picked this up, this little table runner from Dollar Tree. I used some of it in my last little fall video. It was part of our little scarecrow hat. If you guys have not seen that video, I will link it down in the description box for you. He's so cute. But for this project, we're just going to cut out a little rectangulish piece. And then I'm taking and fraying the edges, cutting little 
I don't know, triangles in the bottom and just pulling some pieces out, making a mess on my <laughs> work area is really what I was doing, just throwing it everywhere. That was such a bad idea, do not do that. Pull it and then make sure you place it right into your trash can. If you do not wanna do this part, leave it alone. I actually like making things look a little worn, even though I'm trying to make it look fancy with this shiny silk material. Look, see the mess? I'm like, oh, bad decisions. <laughs> too late damage was done to attach our little fabric piece i'm going to use some tacky glue and i'm going to put that in the four corners of our little piece of fabric now you notice me take that little wood piece that's because i've talked about this before i'm on a folding table so this table moves so the little wood piece helps me kind of get a stable grip when i'm doing things and as usual things don't always really go the way i hope they would and then i fix it later so here we go we're gonna bust out the stapler i'm sorry okay we're gonna take the stapler and we're going to staple down our four corners in the spots that we put our tacky glow now if you notice i put the fabric a little bit further in than the end this way i could give it a pocket see how i'm kind of bending it and there's a little bit of a mountain in the center there and then at the very bottom i'm just going to take and fold it pinch it and then put a staple right in the middle there see look at me still moving free bits i tried to tell you <laughs> makes a mess put it right in the trash can so this happened <laughs> i seriously underestimated how thin this wood was so be mindful that when you go to do this, it's not a huge deal. I just took a hammer and then I pried down the edges, you know, so this way it wouldn't come out of the wood. Do be careful when you're doing this though, because the hammer could easily slip and then you catch your finger. I'm not responsible for any smashed fingers or broken nails, people. But on a serious note for anybody that's like, why didn't you just hot glue everything? I do reselling or I give things as gifts. And for me, these steps are necessary because I wanna make sure that whatever I'm putting together, it is not gonna fall apart. And this is what they should look like once you're done prying them down. Now we're gonna add our little accents and this little bow, I just love a Dollar Tree. It's one of my like favorite things. I love the colors, I like the blues, blues so in right now anyhow yes i'm putting more staplers in it <laughs> sure am gotta make sure this sucker's not going anywhere and then i'm gonna take some tacky glue and we're gonna put over top of the little staples at the top and we're going to attach some buttons i didn't really feel like there was anything wrong with the little hanger that was on here except for it was a little plain so i'm just putting you know some little beads on here and i'm leaving them neutral you color them however you want like i said i was going for neutral and then i'm just attaching that right back on here i did feel like this needed a little something where this pumpkin piece was and took a permanent marker and just really kind of outlined the inside of the area and the outside of the area to bring a little bit more of a high-end look to this piece. Just draws the attention, giving it a little bit more definition. Toss whatever florals you want in here, and I did not glue any of them in there, so if you want to switch them out every single year, you can, and you can keep the piece just the way that it is. So we're gonna need to attach the three pieces. I'm gonna take a popsicle stick and just cut that in little tiny slivers to do the job. And first I'm using hot glue and then I'm going over that with some wood glue. Do you need me to remind you of why again? No? Okay, so let's carry on then. Once I did this for this particular project, I let this dry for a little bit, like 30 minutes, just to really give that glue a chance to set in because we're gonna be pressing on these seams a bit with the jute twine and the super glue gel. Now you can use whatever you want. I'm just using the, anybody else wonder what the hell, like why? Why is there always these weird things sticking out of the twine? Like, what is that? Like, it, why are these crusty bits on my twine? Like, I always question myself, like, why am I purchasing that? <laughs> uh, anyhow, sorry, side rant. Glue, take your Gorilla Glue Gel and put some little layers in the process of wrapping the twine around. If you're not worried about it, just use your hot glue, whatever makes you fuzzy inside. And then I am going to hammer in these hammer tooth. This is why earlier in the video, I was using the stickies. Remember how I said we perpetrating? But now I'm using the hangers so that way we can use this later. 
take the twine and you wrap it in your sections and then I'm taking solo wood flowers you can use whatever type of flowers you want I'm using solo wood flowers to just press down in the center here with some hot glue and then once that dries I go back in with the Gorilla Glue Gel and give it some squirts in some different sections to ensure that these flowers are not popping off my project and make sure you're being careful books came from Dollar Tree as well different sizes you can use as many books as you want obviously or just one you know just one I went with two and the smaller one is significantly smaller than the large one I have this glitter vinyl that I'm using and it honestly it was my favorite to work with it's a little bit thicker and it did not shed I didn't have glitter bits all over the place it was really really nice I felt like the process of doing this was the easiest to make sure I had some overhang to flap around the book ends and then I just cut it short where the pages were on the longer sides I don't know if that makes sense or not but I couldn't tuck it in there on that way so I decided to just cut it short I took some of this. I got this on clearance at Walmart. People pay attention to Walmart clearance. You get deals for a dollar. But I wanted to go a little shabby-ish with this. So I also took some of the Dollar Tree nautical rope and just kind of shredded the little pieces. Threw some greenery on top of here. This maybe took me 20 minutes to cover these books. And it's absolutely stunning how amazing this vinyl upgraded them to look like something you would pay so much more for in a high-end store. Project, you'll need three of the large palettes and we're gonna wanna attach them. I use the wood glue and the staples. Let this dry 24 hours, well overnight. I let all these projects dry overnight before actually beginning on the projects just to make sure they didn't fall apart while I was working on them and I'm using the same paints to accomplish the same style of weathered look aren't you guys proud of me I kept it pretty cohesive this video taking some twine and we're going to attach our hanger because yes we're gonna create another wall decor piece and I'm running out of staples again okay so you may think to yourself like brainy this looks a little familiar i feel like you've done this style and i kind of have do you remember the tin piece that i have i'll pop that up here for you Aww. i know you guys are so nice that's such a nice piece anyhow we're taking that idea and recycling it into a bucket wall decor piece and we're going to start off by using a piece of fabric you can use whatever fabric i'm using burlap here and i stapled the bottom together if you want to overlap it to the next side you go right ahead i or like the back side i did not i wanted mine at the bottom so this way the bottom of mine would be tight and i'm gonna we're gonna cover that up you'll see it in a moment and then i'm taking more of the tacky glue and staples to attach these sides to the back of our palette. Using E6000 or Gorilla Glue Gel here would probably be fine. <laughs> Don't, um, listen, if you want to use hot glue too, you go right ahead. But for me, I just felt <laughs> like this is going to have the best outcome. This is going up for sale in my vendor space. So I wanted to make sure that the piece was going to hold in together hold together and here is our little pocket see how it's really loose at the top and then it's kind of tight at the bottom and just love how cute this turned out to hide the staples at the bottom and around the sides I'm taking some of this Dollar Tree burlap lace applying a hefty amount of the tacky glue over top of the staple area and the sides and then I'm just pressing this right on top of there it's going to 
dry clear so don't even sweat it you are going to want to let this dry for at least an hour before you carry it on doing anything else and I took the sides put a little bit of tacky glue on the sides and then tucked in the excess fabric this way you don't have unfinished looking ribbon sticking out the top or cut off right at the end of the top it looks nice and finished to add a little something extra we're gonna take the stencil I have in my collection and put a little stencil on here now you can leave your however add whatever but I wanted to add a very blended type of stencil so we're gonna bring out the foam brush and then I'm just gonna nip the tip off so it's kind of flat so I can pounce it now I am out of pouncers I'm out of makeup sponges and I'm just trying to save a penny or two so that's what I'm using I am taking these two colors and just going to blend them on up like I said I am not trying to create a stencil that really pops out I want a blended stencil something that you're kind of like oh what is that there's some type of decoration on there it's not overpowering the pretty weathered look if you want a more dominant stencil you go for a dominant color I am going to add a little bit of black on here just to have some edges pop out and that's going to be it for our last project people palettes and make sure you glue them together and then you let this sit I'm using a tumbling block because this is going to hang on the wall and I want a brace away from the wall I don't want palettes to just lean on the wall so the tumbling blocks are thick enough that allow you a little pop out because they will hit the wall versus the palettes and then I'm taking just a couple little tumbling blocks that I have <laughs> stragglers laying around to kind of prop it up and then I'm taking different color paints to give this a very vibrant weathered look and making sure that I'm drying in between rotating the colors. A lot of times I skip the painting and some people complain about that and other people love it. And for stuff like this, because I'm using certain colors, I like to show you exactly what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So you at home, because you know, I'm showing you how to do it, <laughs> can recreate that. So when I'm doing something like this, I'm purposefully placing the paint. It is not just a smear tactic. I'm not trying to smear anything. I am purposefully placing the paint and overlapping the paint very deliberately, making sure it's dry. Then I'm taking a crusty bit paintbrush and I'm putting some chalk paint on it and scraping it so we get a heavy amount off so we can give this a nice dry brushing. This is a little dry brushing hack that I've discovered recently that I'm in love with and it allows me to just kind of go over and give the project a nice natural looking finish quickly it doesn't take long at all then I had this trim laying around that I picked up from Home Depot and I measured it to size this my people is where I love these miter shears look at this baby Look how precise and delicious that cut looks. And let me just tell you something. If I had to hand saw this with that miter box, I would throw that sucker across my patio because I would be so frustrated. And these miter shears made it all so simple. Now, I got to thank Angela Jones DIY and Crafty Kathy <laughs> for this whole, let me grab a tin can and make a tin can project. I seen Crafty Kathy do some pretty amazing projects and Angela Jones like, oh, you know, they're in right now. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go get me a tin can. So I got a tin can and I'm like, oh, I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. They're pinching the can and, you know, they're beautiful, but, you know, I got to be different if I'm going to give you all an idea. So I'm like, let me cut the can in half and use these wire cutters and 10 minutes later, I'm cussing Crafty Kathy out and wishing Angela wasn't my friend anymore. <laughs> I'm like, why did I listen to them? Um, but anyhow, it's beautiful. This project turned out amazing. I'm glad I did it. I used some chalk paint to just give it one coat and let that dry. And then I'm making myself a little hanger, taking several pieces of twine and then using my nail gun 
or stapler, staple gun, the proper way, okay? Made sure it was the right way and <laughs> stapled them. And then I twirled the twine all the way to the other side to give it a cute little look and then stapled it down on the other side. So we had ourselves a nice little hanger. And then I'm gonna take this Easter napkin that I do have for sale in my Easter kit on my website. The link is down in the description box, but I'm just using the little floral piece in the egg. I'm not using the whole egg. And taking a gloss, I know we're using gloss, gloss Mod Podge, not a mat, and putting the napkin pieces I cut into sections on here. And no, you're not gonna see me bring in the sponge either because I'm not worried if this is perfect or has seams or if it's wrinkly, it did not matter. We're making this look like an old tin can that is just super cute with some, you know, character. And I gotta tell you, I wouldn't mind doing a whole tin can like this either, not just the half a tin can, but for this project, it made sense just to do the half. Or if you like that pinched looking can, go ahead and make that pinch sucker. That would look really cute on here too. Put a little rope on there so it hangs or, you know, some embellishments, however. This is just a cute idea. I am taking some paints and just kind of blending the piece in and then I'm getting to use for the first time. I just recently got these in a Dollar Tree browsing video, but I did want to show you if you don't have a stamper, you can use anything like, you know, the top of this Waverly can. Put your stamp on here and it just stays. And then you can stamp it on whatever without having to buy the extra pieces. I do have mine. I just was lazy and didn't know where the hell it was and didn't want to take the time to go find it while I was trying to film. Also, not every piece pressed on there perfect. So I took a dotting pen and filled it in. This wall decor is gone, so you're gonna need nine Dollar Tree palettes and a staple and some wood glue are gonna be the tools of the trade for this project. We're gonna start out attaching just three at a time because this piece is gonna be fairly big, so you wanna do it in stages. And I'm making sure to put the wood glue all along the edges or in the seams, just like I'm doing here. Are you watching in the video? Okay. Now, once I get them to this point, we're then going to take our staple and we're going to staple them where they meet together. And we're gonna do this for the whole thing. And it's a little time consuming, I'm not gonna lie. And if you're wondering what the piece of wood is for, my table is one of them cheap, you know, fabric table joints from somewhere that you use for parties. And that's what I roll with. I stage it, make it look fabulous for all of you to watch me DIY on. And it's not very stable. <laughs> so that piece of wood helps me make sure that that nail, the staples are getting really into the wood. Next, after we have our three rows, we are going to make sure they're all even and we are gonna take a popsicle stick and cut four nice little clean sections and then staple them where all of these meet. So this way we have one big board or backing, one big backing. Grab your wood glue, smoosh it on all in the parts. So this way there is a bond between the wood pieces and the staples. So once this dries overnight and you come back the next day, it's ready to go. And don't be afraid to put extra pieces around the sides either because the more staples you have in here, the sturdier this will be in the long it will last. Now that we have that all completely together, we're gonna let that dry and take this beautiful wood mirror piece from an old piece of furniture that I picked up and we're gonna paint it up. And unfortunately, before I paint it up, I didn't rub two brain cells together and realized this is gonna have some tannis going on or some bleeding, bleed through. And protect the piece before I even got started after I cleaned it. So since I didn't do that and use like a one, two, three primer spray paint, it was raining that day, so I 
decided to bust out my Dixie Bells balls. This stuff is great to use because it dries clear and you can do little spots. So if you do a piece of furniture and you notice later there's a spot or two, you can just, you know, rub a little one there or paint a little one there and let it dry and then just paint your color right over it without having to spray or do or make a whole mess with a whole bunch of product. So I really like this for that. But oh my goodness, people, the yellowing was out of control. Look at how horrible this got. While that's drying, we're going to move on to painting our project. And we're going to use these two pretty colors. If you do not have Dixie Belle products, you can use Apple Barrel paints as well. Mix them with a little bit of chalk paint if you want that thicker consistency. Because sometimes the acrylic paints do take more coats than just a chalk paint so using a white would work fine to mix those two colors i have painted hundreds of palettes and the best way to accomplish this is a spray paint but if you're going for a weathered look for me i like to use watered down chalk paints or mix the chalk paints with some acrylic paints to get desired colors purposefully place the paint in the sections you want and then we're going to wet down our heavy thick white chalk paint and go over in long strokes throughout the whole piece so we don't have any harsh stops mostly i skip painting because it's self-explanatory i do like to show when i'm doing specific techniques this however i wanted to just show you the color variation in the yellow and the white bananas right just so crazy that is so different with the tannis in it i'm kind of a napkin connoisseur <laughs> And I love this particular napkin. And since we're going vintage everyday decor in this video, I'm going to rip the napkin in spaces or places that I want to just keep certain little designs of it. And then we're going to pull it apart. A good idea would be to put a little bit of Mod Podge on your fingers to peel that sneaky layer off underneath the top of your napkin. And then we're going to just take a sponge to press down our napkin wherever we want or in our little mirror frame now if you don't have a mirror frame you can pick up a regular frame or just skip it all together when you see the end project you don't have to do this part if you don't want to i just thought it was an extra nice little touch now we're going to take some of this beautiful trim i picked up from home depot and it comes in small sections but i get the longer ones because i'm constantly building things and cut it down to size and i'm using my miter shears for this now i do not use miter shears often because mm, sometimes they just don't work out the way you want them to but for trim and dowels they work magically i did happen to cut these frame pieces a little short on their 45 degree angle so i had to make them even and with doing that i had to come in with my frame a little bit around the edges like you see here it wasn't a huge deal in the end project you just don't even care because it's so stunning but i took wood glue and hot glue made sure to not overlap the two so it didn't cancel out the bonds i always like to use wood glue for the immediate hold and then wood glue or e6000 or a uh, favorite of mine is Gorilla Glue Gel for that long lasting hold, especially when you're selling or giving people things, you just have that fuzzy inside. Know that those glues are going to hold your project together and last. Now that our little decoupage sections are all dry, we're going to just stipple on some colors here just to kind of age it a little bit. And when I do this, I like to go dark first medium and then come back with a color that is actually going to blend whatever you're decoupaging in with the furniture or your thrift or your decor piece so it looks like one cohesive unit and for this project in particular we're going to use this color to go back over and as you can see it actually is the color of the little vintage design in the napkin this is a little knob I picked up from Hobby Lobby. For whatever reason, them little stem metal pieces on there, they're always so long and you never need them that long. And I did not feel like busting out anything to cut it down. So I'm just taking this little metal wire and we are going to MacGyver together <laughs> a little piece inside of it with some Gorilla Glue Gel to put through our little holes in our palettes so we can create this as our hanging mechanism for our beautiful sconce. And let me know what you think about this one.
our vintage book decor, we're gonna need two books. And I picked these up from Dollar Tree and one is slightly bigger than the other one. You can use three books if you want, but I'm just using two for this. These are fairly big. And then I'm going to glue them together using wood glue for this process and we're gonna let this dry before we do anything else to it while this is drying we're gonna need to bring out our molds now these are prima designs please mind all the crusty bits in there these things have seen better days and i'm being lazy and didn't feel like cleaning it out this is my favorite paper clay that i like to use for those of you who have carpal tunnel i've talked about this all the time i use this particular clay because it is easy to mold here is me even showing you this stuff is getting a little crusty bits everywhere <laughs> it's kind of old so i'm just adding some water to it rolling it back up in my hand over and over again so i can press it down in this mold and it brought it right back to life and it was really easy to work with even when it was starting to go old i i obviously need to get more clay but it worked people it worked a little bit of water you know add to your clay and everything be okay <laughs> for the spines of the books i always like to do two different pieces so this way it just makes each book look a little bit unique in your stack if you want to do the same spine you go right ahead but i'm using two different molds for this part and then i'm attaching them with wood glue i like to use wood glue when i'm doing this i use this particular clay on my furniture as well and i just feel like the bond holds really well with this particular clay and wood glue even with the books because I've made a bunch of book decor as well so I just continue using this method and I think there's even a book DIY video where I make a bunch of ideas <laughs> in one video I will see if I can find them and also put that in the description box for anyone that's interested to watch it here comes the not so fun part about this now you are forced to let these pieces dry and by no means 30 minutes to an hour. You really need to let them dry three to six hours to make sure that these clay pieces are completely dry because you're applying them as they are still wet and the wood glue. Once your piece is completely dry, you're gonna wanna take whatever color paint that you want. I like to use chalk paints when I'm doing this and I'm using Waverly's plaster and covering the entire set of both books. And this took me two and a half coats. Really the half was just me kind of going back and covering in little spots that didn't fill in. And then we're gonna just take some extra little bits and put in the ends. Now for this part, I was completely not paying attention to how much glue I should or should not have been putting on here. What in the world? Ah! Oh no. Mm. Now that we've averted that crisis, so I just taking these pieces are all from Dollar Tree and adding to the ends of the books just to give the spine a little something different. And I had these little metal pieces. It's like a frame and bunch of key pieces that I picked up from Hobby Lobby along with this beautiful thick decorative paper that we are about to decoupage onto the top cover of this book. Now, if you're new to my content, let me just tell you, I decoupage everything I can decoupage <laughs> and this paper is so thick so when you're using thick paper like this it can be a challenge but the first thing is to make sure you map out your area that you're purposefully placing your paper so that's what I did and then I made sure to cut out where we are putting our little frame because we don't want to just lay our frame right on top of the paper I mean you can I'm not going to do that. We're going to cut a little window out and then set it in there. So it looks like our little frame and our key is sitting on the book. And then this is kind of just around the book. Now it has been my experience, people, that less is more when it comes to decoupage. <laughs> However, don't less is more this paper. More is more with this paper. One, it has grooves in it, so you got to get the Mod Podge in there. And two, it's extra thick, so if you're not making sure that it is in all those parts, you're going to get bubbles. So 
instead of putting the Mod Podge on the book, I decided to do the entire back of the paper and then use my sponge to really push out any extra excess. And, and that's another reason I love the sponge because the sponge grabs any extra Mod Podge. It doesn't get on me. And it's so sad. I'm like down to the last bit of my Gorilla Glue Gel. This is my go-to stuff. I just love this stuff. But I'm using that to attach our little metal piece. Do not use hot glue attaching metal things it will end up popping off down the road just listen to me i have your back okay have your back use some gorilla glue gel or some e6000 okay use that instead since everything is all dry we're just gonna go in and touch up all the shinies because we do not want the shiny parts of what we just attached to come through in any way shape or form so i'm just taking the same exact paint that I put on the book and covering up everything and then we're going to grab some color and grab us a little sponge and we're going to go over top of the book gently putting some color in here just to add a little something something you want to skip this part and just leave the book like it is it's stunning just as it is you go right ahead I've had some people in the comments tell me I got a little extra sometimes and to stop layering bless y'all but I'm extra and this is my project. You DIY your stuff the way you want, okay? I'm here for inspiration and I gotta let my own inspiration flow and this is how I'm going with this. I'm adding the bright colors first and this is so once I layer the vintage look on top of it, those bright colors kind of pop through that vintage aspect. And for that, I'm starting with a little bit of Waverly's Antique Wax not heavy just a tiny bit and going around some of the edges on the book and some of the raised spots then i'm taking some of dixie bell's black gilding wax rubbing a little bit on my finger and then going over some of the areas to just add like a dirt really dirt looking piece like this book stack has been sitting in the back of a library somewhere and i had to glam it up just a smidge with a little bit of gold gilding wax if you do not have these pieces some metallic paints will work fine as well for the gold or if you want to add silver and that's going to be it for this one People, that is going to be it for today's Dollar Tree DIY and Hacks video. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. As always, I appreciate you. I hope you will join me in 2023. I have tons of content coming for you. If you need more Dollar Tree DIY inspiration today, I'll link my entire playlist right here for you. And until next time.